The final entry is our team entry. Jim Day, Jimmy Elder, and Tommy Gayford. I would now like to call on Miss Erin Ballard. I can't tell you how amazing it is to be here tonight and be a part of this. And I feel like I'm talking from a different perspective. I'm talking as a young rider looking towards the future. And tonight we're honoring the past. And to be a part of it and to have a better understanding of what has happened is, I'm so emotional, I'm almost crying. But I can't wait until I can be a part of this. And they induct the next gold medal team into the Olympics. So for me to be able to present to Jimmy Day and Jimmy Elder and, and Tom Gayford this award is a huge honor. <laughs> You're just wonderful. Now, now hang on a second. Hang on a second, the three of you. Hang on, let's, let's just hang on for one second. Before we give them their awards, do me a favor. Stand underneath your picture. Okay? Now, first of all, you can see, obviously, that the original James Bond was made after Tommy Gayford. <laughs> You know, when you've been competing for 60 years, you know, you have an awful lot of people to thank. And I, to be honest with you, you know, it would take me a few hours just to thank them all because I've, I've had so many wonderful moments, uh, so many uh, great teammates, and uh, so many wonderful friends in this sport. But uh, if I had to zero on uh, just a few leading up to the team, and I would have to say, you know, that I had uh, two wonderful, or superior, I should say, teammates. Here's Tom Gayford. Tom was probably the most fierce competitor that I've ever competed against, and I think a lot of the international competitors would say the same thing. Uh, he's, um, he was always looked on. He's a little older than me, and he was always the one that we had to watch and get. As a matter, Tom was so fierce, you know, especially at the local shows, if you even thought about breaking a rule or a little close to it, Tom would report you to the steward. <laughs> but when he became your teammate, it was all for one and one for all. Now, Jimmy Day, Jimmy Day was our golden boy, and he was probably the reason why we really got to the Olympics is that then he said, if you did well in the Pan 67 Pan American Games in Winnipeg, we'll send you to the Olympics. While well, Jimmy went and won the gold medal at the Pan American Games, defeating the legendary Nelson Pazoa in a jump off. And uh, the team ended up gone. And, and I would really say, you know, Jimmy probably is probably the most talented rider and horseman that Canada's ever, ever produced. I mean, at, at, in 1964, at 18, he, he went, and I went on the team uh, on that, and uh, he had two, if you pardon the expression, dogs. And he ended up the international champion beating everybody. Uh, no. So it's... Um, uh, you know, and there, there's other people. I mean, I talked about Denny, but there was also, uh, P, uh, well, first off, I'm going to take a step backwards. Because there's one other person that really should be up here, and that is Torchy Miller. Torchy was every bit a part of our team. He rode in the individual uh, class. Uh, And, and it was really just unfortunate that it was the last major international competition like the Olympics, Pan American, World Champions, where, where three out of three riders counted. And uh, so he didn't really ride in the, uh, well, he couldn't ride in, in the team class, but he did ride in the uh, individual. And Torchy's the kind of guy that always gave us a really good steady ride. He was our steady Eddie kind of a guy. I remember back in, uh, was on the, we were at the Pan American team, 
1983, and he was the uh, he, he was the, he was the uh, lead off rider. Well, just before he went, he had a horrendous spill, and he said he broke his wrist actually. But anyways, we threw him back up on the horse and said, "Now, Torch, just go a nice steady ride. Just just go keep us in the hunt." Well, he had a nice steady ride over the first two fences. And then Torchy went for it, and he galloped and ran around that course and put us right back into contention. And we ended up winning the silver medal there. He was, he was on the team that won the gold medal, too, in, in 71, but I'm just telling you of that event. But uh, we also had some great other individuals. And I, I, I just mentioned Denny Whitaker, but Peter Harris, which was chairman of, of our jumping team, and it was, and uh, Lou Makuski, which was our team manager. And, uh, and, and Lou, uh, you, you know, died too young because he was probably one of the finest trainers that uh, uh, trained the young horses and riders in Canada. So, uh, and, and also our president of the CEF at that time was George Jacob. He was a great diplomat. And when we got into trouble, he kept us out. But uh, uh, there's, a, there's another group, too, as, as well as the owners, uh, the Samuels, uh, Bob Ballard, who introduced me to, uh, 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 to introduce me to the McLaughlins, is responsible for me getting uh, the horse, uh, the immigrant. And also we had uh, Sam Stanley, Doug Cudney, and all of our fathers, Jimmy's and, and Tom's and my owned uh, some of our horses, too, or one of our horses, too, in the, in the event. But, uh, I, you know, if I, I, I have to mention the horses. Gail mentioned how the horses are, really, horses were our life and became our life anyways or, and, and our lifestyle. But our, our three horses really had a story to tell. They were a rag to riches of horse. Tom Gayford bought Big D for $500 at the Fort Erie racetrack. He still thinks he paid too much. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Day's mother Edna found a Canadian club in, the, in a field in uh, Orangeville. And immigrant w was in a riding school two years before, you know, I was able to get him. So, that, that, and all these horses, uh, you know, uh, uh, Prabhud, uh, have, have wonderful stories. I mean, I could go on and on about them because they, well, you know, they gave us so much. As a matter of fact, you know, it always surprised me how the horse gives it to you. You know, every time. If you ask, nine times out of ten they give. And uh, it's just a wonderful feeling to be ride them. And uh, so I'd just like to also make mention of uh, our grooms. We had Penny, Caroline, Nancy, and, uh, and Bart. And Penny was my groom, and believe me, I couldn't have done it without her, because uh, I worked all day, uh, five days a week, just like Tom did. We rode either early in the morning or at, uh, you know, late at night, and of course went to the shows or trained on the weekends. So it was really, uh, uh, we, we, had, we had a, well, we had a busy schedule, so to speak. And Penny did, and, and Immigrant was only six, he was a very young horse. And he was still preliminary. He was still in the preliminary jumpers. And, uh, but he had a hell of a jump in him. And, and that's why I chose him. But uh, Penny uh, galloped him five. He was a half-bred horse, and so was my other horse, Pieces of Eight. It was a Mustang. And he, uh, he, they, she galloped them uh, twice a week, five miles, just to keep them fit so they would be able to take the altitude and everything. And but really, I think our horses were... Just as fit as any, I, I didn't have, because of the altitude of 7,500 feet, it really didn't make any difference to uh, my horses at least, and I certainly Tom. And uh, so she was a very, very valuable asset, and uh, I just really want to thank her for all the work she did for me. And uh, just in, in concluding, I, I'd like to also, of course, I have to thank my family because of, uh, they're the most important one. My wife, uh, Mary Ann, who was with 50 years, was uh, always there. As I said, I worked five days a week and rode the other two days and rode at nights and everything like that. And she had to hold the fort. We had four small children. 
and a farm and a business to run. I had to go down to Queen and Spadina for 25 years every day. And, uh, and, and, and she was a big part, as well as my children have given me tremendous support. Um, um, they're here tonight, uh, Mike, Mark, Liz, and Aaron. And uh, also uh, my sister, and my, uh, that Margie that's here, and my brother John, and my brother Norman on that. And my, of course, my dad and mom were so darn supportive, although dad would never buy me a horse over a thousand bucks. But anyways, uh, that's probably the reason why I kept riding so, so much, because everything was a challenge. But, but I would just like to thank, you know, Mark and uh, his, his crew. I know, Mark, your mom's proud of you, and certainly your dad would be proud of you. And uh, as they said before, this was the right time to get it going. If you have left it any later, three of us might not have been around. <laughs> <laughs> But any, anyways, I, I've had, I've had a, a, you know, a great, a great time with, the, with my horses. And although I, I guess Tom and I were a, a little envious of seeing the prize money that the bank and see that Bank of Montreal and CN put up now, you know what? I wouldn't change it for the for the world. It's really, I've had a hell of a ride. <laughs> okay, Tom, it's your turn. <laughs> Hey, after Eller gets through, there's nothing to say and there's no time to say it. <laughs> you, you know, you want to turn them off sometimes, but <laughs> anyway, just a couple of things. One of the highlights of my life is to be here tonight and be presented. I have my family here, five daughters, my wife, my wife who put up with everything just like Jimmy's wife when we were riding and schooling and late for dinner and up early in the morning and my mother and my father my father was a great horseman he started it he helped us he helped coach us and gave us very good ideas and was really a great asset one little thing here if it wasn't for mark samuel's father this would not have happened they were If Ernie hadn't stepped up and bought his partner out of Canadian Club after the Pan American Games, we wouldn't have had a team. So basically, our sponsors supported the team and stepped up to the wicket. My father didn't sell Big D, and Bill McLaughlin didn't sell Immigrant. He wouldn't, and it was our sponsors that held on to us and made this whole evening, the whole shooting match happen and possible. And just to thank all our background supporters, there are none of them really here now. They're all ghosts of the past, but they're very, very close to many of us now. So thank everybody. Holy smokes. These guys are pretty tough to follow. Used to be pretty tough in the old days, too. But anyhow, uh, it's a tremendous honor to be here. And uh, many, many thanks to, to Mark for uh, the inspiration of putting this uh, Hall of Fame together. It's, it's a great honor for us and my senior fellows here that are pretty chatty tonight. But anyhow, uh, especially old Jim Bob there, he's yakking up a storm. But <laughs> in my life, uh, I had great support to begin with from my family, my mom, Ed Narrow, and my dad, Dick Day, and uh, they got me started. And way back when, uh, Gordy Curtin and his wife, Fifi, they uh, were probably the great inspirations of my life to get me actually started as a young, young riding guy. And then once I got going, old Jim Bob here, he kept me going pretty good and was always very encouraging. And... Uh, yeah, help me with my owners, which I always needed help with. That was always a bit of a problem. And Tom, <laughs> and Tom was always a pretty, uh, you know, such a, as Jim would say, a ferocious competitor. Hell, we'd be at Richmond Hill here jumping for a ham sandwich, and Jim, Bob, and Tom, they'd be knocking, knocking heads like it was something really important. <laughs> and, 
But anyway, I think, you know, their great competitive instinct and desire, you know, has helped, helped drag me up a little bit. And hopefully we set a little bit of a trend in the whole uh, Canadian sport industry. But I remember back when uh, it was after the Pan Am Games and Canadian Club was about to be sold, the horse that I was riding, and uh, Mr. Samuel was humming and hawing about whether he would buy a moat and whether he could get to keep the horse, and I was pretty, pretty discouraged at the time. And I remember Mrs. Samuel was always in the background of Mr. Samuel's ear. I was going to chew him on one side, and she was giving it to him on the other side. The end result was that he ended up buying Canadian Club and keeping him and said, it's okay, he's yours now, you can ride him in the Olympics, and the rest will be history. So without the support of Mr. Samuel, and especially Mrs. Samuel, helped him kind of spur him along a little bit, um, we put together quite a team at Samson Farms, and uh, Mark and Kim and, and Tammy, they were just little, little rugrats back in those days, riding ponies and, and galloping around. But it was fun being a part of it, and it's, it's tremendous now that they're carrying the ball. And... Uh, you know, organizing this, this, this event for all of us old timers <coughs> and uh, future, future uh, Hall of Famers to come. So, uh, thank you again. And Mark and the Samuel family, it was a tremendous help. Without your support and Mr. Samuel's support in my earlier years, I would never be here now with all these <coughs> chatty old fellows. So thank you, and we'll see you later. Gentlemen, congratulations once again. The 1968 Olympic team, Jimmy Day and Canadian Club, Jimmy Elder and the Immigrants, Tommy Gayford and Big D.